Welcome to Las Vegas, everybody. And uh, we are in front of the Bellagio. Oof, I don't know, the fountains were kicking up beautifully last night. Doesn't look like they're in action yet today, unfortunately. But I'm going to brave it in what I've been told is the uh, 5G capital of at least some portion of the world. I hear there's a lot of it, but Rob and I were almost flying out and I figured we would take some questions first. So, um, I don't know how long we'll be here, but there may be a guest star appearing soon. And with that said, uh, maybe I'll share a couple thoughts, but I can on my phone see the comments coming in. James Thibault, Thibault, let's go. Yes, uh, Cosmo, welcome on into the chat. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me all right? I know it's a little bit windy, um, but let's see how, uh, got somebody dancing over there. He's excited about silver, makes sense. Um, hi, Allison Silverland, great to see you. And here's one of the big attractions that people were lining up around the block to see. Yeah, that's right. How do I zoom out on this thing? That's a little too close to Rob. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Rob Keens of Gold Silver Pros. To talk silver, Rob, you look like you're thinking about jumping in. Is that is that what's going on here? So, I'm just enjoying the sun out here in Vegas. It's nice and warm. All right. Folks, let me know if you can hear Rob. Rob, I'm going to ask you to talk a little louder since it's windy and all that out here. But, oh, the legend himself says Cosmo. Yep, that is a good way to refer to Rob. Rob will uh, hopefully be taking some silver questions here. Leaf is saying to jump in. Marco says yes. Looks like a nice pool, actually. Uh, water looks pretty good, Rob. So, yeah, be good for a swim. Rob, uh, did you get the Snickers bar? I did not get the Snickers bar. Aren't we gonna ask some of these people if they'd rather have <laughs> Snickers or a piece of fine shiny? Rob, you're gonna, you're gonna go test it out, see if they, uh, give them like a hundred, uh, $10 bill or the, the talent ounce. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me all right. And don't have anything planned except to take questions. So if anyone has questions, send them on in. Rob, I'll ask you the first question. Uh, any thoughts uh, on the economy? We saw some interesting things while we were here, um, especially what the taxi driver told us about why it's hard to find a taxi in Las Vegas. But in either case, any silver related thoughts as we wait for questions for the pro to come in? Yeah, so the taxis aren't running out here because people have their unemployment checks and uh, it allows them to just sit at home. So it's, it's hard to get around. You gotta walk everywhere in Vegas now. Come away from the speaker, Rob. Grab, uh, grab the bags over here. You could rob a true teammate. I'll pick up the flag for a second while he helps us keep our luggage safe. Maybe over here, Rob. Bring Britain, I'll bring the bags over here. <laughs> That might be a little bit too much distance for this down on that one. Um, although, while we wait for Rob to kindly help with the rest of the bags, I will answer a question that came in. What did I think about the up and down movement today? I mean, on one hand, Rob, someone's asking about the up and down movement in the silver price today. Very choppy. I'm sorry, I meant to say very spoofy. Yuck, yuck. <laughs> It's Monday. Uh, it's Monday, so they're going to slam it down. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, my comment is like, what else would it take for the CFTC to actually wake up and do their job? Although one of the things we discussed as we were here this weekend is that fortunately, that's what's great about life when you have a good, honest intention and you're thinking about things. There's, there's always a, a way to respond in positive fashion. And while we won't share the secret yet, do you think the CFTC would be wise to heed, you know, I don't have subpoena power or anything, but I put a deadline at the close on Friday for Rostin Benham of the CFTC to share all this great, uh, you know, insight that he's been having with his silver investigation because we're seeing the markets get raped. And I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to use that term insensitively as a bad choice, although in, I think you get 
what I'm saying and that it's disgusting what happens because people are being stolen from. Um, so Rob, any thoughts on any of that? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if the regulators actually came out with anything on the silver market. We know we've seen them just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. The only one that really came out and did anything was Mark Chilton. Unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. Uh, he seemed to be the only honest guy over there at the CFTC. It'd be nice to see somebody else step up and uh, nice to be somebody else step up and actually do something with with that investigation. Well, Spirit Dime says they are all bought and paid for. Rob, you're your former professional auditor. I mean, you've been investigating this situation. I don't like making accusations like that lightly, but it's hard. I can't construct a, a scenario in which that isn't the case. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right. I don't know. What, what, that's not <laughs> a brief answer. comment from Rob on that one. Uh, very direct and to the point. So, um, so who else has a question? Ryan Reitman, if Bitcoin is deflationary, precious metals are inflationary, what are your thoughts on the Bitcoin holders rushing into the metals markets? You know, uh, Bitcoiners have a lot in common with the precious metals markets, which is nice to see people actually doing a little bit of both. I actually think they're completely different solutions. Uh, but it's good to see, you know, Bitcoin community recognizing the gold community and vice versa. I think that's energy for is good for both of our teams. I would agree with that. And uh, we just had a comment there that I'm going to try and pull that back up. Someone was asking what it would take for these industrial users to uh, wake up and notice what's going on. And I'll add one quick comment on that. On Wednesday morning, Greg Crow of Silver One Resources is going to be coming on the show. And as I was doing some review of some of his past interviews this morning, he actually commented on that and um, he had an interesting answer. I think these guys can't be completely blind. Uh, I don't know, maybe some of them listen to Jeff Curry or Richard Hayes, but in either case, uh, Rob, what do you what do you think on that one? Well, I talked to a lot of mining company execs and they've been waiting for this. They've been waiting for companies to reach out and, and contact them about getting resources. And, you know, you look at big companies like Tesla, what would they do without silver? And what would a lot of these electronic companies do without their silver supply? And given the silver squeeze that's going on, it appears as though they're going to want to try to get their supply sooner rather than later. We had Samsung ink a deal with Impact Silver a few years ago. And we know uh, about that from both Samsung and Impact who reported it. I'm still waiting for a company to come in and, and do a deal with like a Pan American Silver or First Majestic to get, you know, to get some silver for their for their operations. Because if they wait and they don't have a deal in place and we hit a short squeeze on the COMEX, uh, it's going to be really tight. And uh, that may cause a delay in the release of uh, certain products like we see in the automotive market with the, the lack of semiconductors. Uh, that could definitely happen with silver and it could stretch to many areas of the market that utilize silver in their products. So. Uh, uh, they could be more far-reaching than what we saw in the semiconductor market. So I, I, I've been waiting to see that. I'm sure there have been some backroom deals already talked about. We'll wait to see if there's any interesting news coming up here soon on that front. Well, I hear you. And uh, let's see, we had, oh, great question from the Poltz family. Did anyone watch Richard Hayes on Sky News Australia? Come on, the Poltz family. You know darn well that I saw it more than once already, regardless if we call this a vacation or not. Um, I don't know, uh, there's a rumor going around town that I've downloaded a bunch of Perth Mint videos onto my computer for editing purposes on the flight home. I can confirm or deny that. I will not confirm or deny that, but I'll ask Rob, the bankster terminator with his sunglasses over there, what do you think about uh, Richard Hayes? Did you catch his new... But I, actually, I was a little surprised. I don't know the exact timing, but it was interesting when I called the Perth Mint. One of the things they told me is that he did his interview and he was done. I thought he gave a lot of information that conflicts everything else that's out there, and now he doesn't want to answer for it. But yeah. again, I don't know when this one was recorded. Did you see it though? I didn't see the most recent interview, but I, I find his his comments very interesting. Very much like an apologist, uh, you know, for the Mint. And uh, we'll just see what happens. I mean, when you put yourself out there like that and make those calls and you get proven wrong, as I think it's happening right now with all the people reporting delivery issues, 
Uh, I think I think that says as much as you need to know about that opinion. It'd be interesting to see what his latest comments were. Well, Rob, would you support No Loss Inc.'s suggestion for uh, Perth Mint rebranding to, they could just call it the Perth Mint, the Perth un Unallocated Repository. <laughs> That's right, unallocated. Uh, we'll have your medals to you sometime next year. That would be my tag. All right. Munchalot asks, could an OPEC-style union of miners crush COMEX and bring medals to true value? I'm going to toss one adjustment in there. I've thought about that before. I don't know if I would want to go with, I get what he or she is saying with the OPEC term on one hand. Now with that said, if I were to construct something called, I don't know, for example, the Silver Integrity, in, in, Silver Industry Integrity Committee, let's just say in my spare time, I was writing up something like that and getting the key stakeholders of the silver industry involved and making it based simply on nothing else but integrity and honor returning to this market that has been rated repeatedly, repeatedly. Um, so Rob, I don't know, do you think it's possible someone could do that? And, then, and one last add-on, not have to go outside of the rules as fraudulent and trampled on by the rule makers as they may be, but do you think it's possible that anyone could start organizing meetings to address these issues in a completely ethical, appropriate, legal, responsible, and fair manner. Essentially, the opposite of the government, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, or the Perth Mint. Yes, I do think it's possible. I think somebody has already started that. Can't give away who that is. What? But yeah, no, I do. I do is it Jeff Christian? <laughs> it's Jeffrey Christian <laughs> and Jeff Curry. They started the uh, Silver Wow. Committee. Is there anything that guy can't do? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, Do you think Jeff Curry could beat the blackjack table without counting cards? Um, he just knows the direction things are going in. That's right. He's got that instinct. He, he's Nostradamus. Um, no, I, I, I think it's not going to take much. And like you said, you don't have to go outside the rules. You can trade within the rules. You see what's happening with the silver squeeze movement. Uh, they're putting a lot of pressure on the silver uh, right now. The, the retail prices are to have high premiums. And the, the next place it's going to hit is the wholesale market and the big bars, the 1,000 ounce bars. You'll see that hit next, and the retail demand is already uh, putting pressure on that market. Because see, you, what happens is all these mints have got to plan out for a year. They got to plan what they're going to make. And you've seen uh, Mexico shut down their their Libertad production already. You've seen the U.S. Mint deliver more. Uh, I think Silver Eagles in the first few months than they have in the previous few years. So essentially, what we're having right now is we're having a run on a lot of the mints right now, including the government mints. So next will be the wholesale market. You'll see that start to hit. That Rob, thing. that's just keyboard thumper talk. <laughs> As right. low blood blood pressure is correctly pointing out. Um, Rob, some great questions coming in. Um, first of all, where do you think you would have a better chance of making a profit if you open an account at Goldman Sachs or if you went across the lake to the Bellagio and hit the craps table? <laughs> Which one would you get a more honest deal? I think the craps table because they have, uh, they're have they regulated as to how that works all on the back end. I'm not sure I would trust any of the banks right now with my money. Alrighty, that's the same answer I had too. Rob, is Europe out of silver? I saw last night a uh, message on Twitter or somewhere. I took a quick look at their site. It seems as if they were out of the newly minted, uh, the Philharmonics. Uh, what are you hearing about Europe? Yeah, some of those mints, it looks like they're short too. Although I don't think silver's caught on in Europe quite as much as it has here in the States. It's a little bit behind, but we, we have heard of some potential shortages in some of the major mints there as well. Of course, last year with, with the virus, we had some shutdowns, but they've extended to this year. I have some people riding me and saying it's harder to get. It's harder to get in any quantity, so I think there's still some there, but it's not a lot. And so I think what you're going to see next is going to move over to Europe. Uh, I think it's already moving to Asia. We've heard some, we've heard some report, early reports out of Asia that the silver, especially in India, is really hard to get. And so they may be going a little bit heavier gold right now. Of course, we're trying to put together a deal to get some Peruvian silver over to India and over to the United States to help out the, the lack of supply. So stay tuned for that. We may have an announcement on our channel here on that pretty soon. Well, that makes sense. Rob, a question from Chris in Las Vegas. Do you think this guy, Chris Marcus, when he suggested to the CFTC that it would be wise to finally answer what they're investigating or comment or at least 
give some indication or respond to the evidence that Chris Marcus has submitted. When he said that they'd be wise to do that before the close on Friday, do you think he's bluffing? Do I think Chris is bluffing? No, yeah. I don't think Chris is bluffing at all. And How yes, would you know that, though? Oh, it's because I know Chris. Um, no, but I Are think you sure? any government regulator is beholden to the people and they need to answer questions. And the government right now doesn't feel as though they have to answer questions to the public. And that's when you know you have issues when they're not answerable to the public. So yes, they do. And uh, who knows what may happen. We may have some meetings of the Silver Integrity Committee and some things may come out to put additional pressure on these regulators who aren't doing their jobs. Yeah, well, uh, that makes sense. Um... Ooh, I had another great question. Maybe it'll come back to me in a second, but uh, let's see if we have a question coming in there. Uh, oh, actually, yes, I remember my question now. In terms of the contradictory information that the Perth Mint has given out, given that's an integral part of the entire, this is an interconnected silver market, do you think that Ross Benham of the CFTC has been all over that and he's just cat-like waiting to pounce and he's setting a trap and waiting till people lose a lot more money similar to what the SEC did now headed by Gary Gensler no less although I hear that's not been confirmed but is Ross setting a trap to lure them in before he points out to protect American investors that there's some big discrepancies in a key cog of this market or, or how do you what, what do you think was going on behind the scenes there well i think the cftc has had their chances already to to address this issue so i don't know why he would be waiting to do it i think there's enough evidence there and yeah, but rob it's it's only been 41 years since they participated <laughs> in the uh fraud of the 1980 maybe yeah. it takes time for their investigation yeah maybe it's going to take an extra year no I, I don't have any faith in that agency whatsoever they're a toothless agency by their own admission staff papers last year they said we need to do more in terms of enforcement but we can't so you know where they stand on enforcement they don't have the right powers of enforcement it's going to take congress coming up with some additional legislation and it's going to take some people there that actually want to do something about it the last person who wanted to do something about it bart shelton did the best he could and i think on your channel brought out a lot of information around jp morgan and silver but didn't have the enforcement capability unfortunately to actually take it to the banks so I know they recently got uh, a fine, 120 million for, for rigging the silver in the treasury markets, but it's not enough. There has to be some sort of criminal conviction. A tax, Rob, it's a tax. Let's use the appropriate nomenclature. Right, it's a return on investment for the banks where they pay that fine and then they make their money many times over every year after that. We need to actually shut them down and we need somebody to go to jail and answer for their crimes. And until that happens, I don't think you're gonna see uh, the big banks get out of those markets. Rob, given that we're in Las Vegas, could you provide the Vegas line for the chances that if Gary Gensler actually, you know, if he is being appointed by an administration with any real power, um, that if he goes to the SEC, what would be the Vegas line on him? Because again, Rob, I'm, I'm a little confused. Wasn't he the commissioner of the CFTC during their investigation where they said they found nothing? Bart Chilton told us they found plenty. They never mentioned that. They've never mentioned anything about what he said since then. Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, they reported that they didn't find a few, but hundreds of thousands of occasions of spoofing. That's right. And that was I, that was during his, Gensler's t tenure, there right? Go, yes. So what is the Vegas line in terms of, is he waiting to spring his trap now that he's from the SEC perch, or is he trying to recreate the SEC's regulation similar to what they did with Bernie Madoff. I'd give you odds at about 100,000 to one. Probably. Wow, good one. goodness, and I can get that in silver? <laughs> yeah, cash, silver, gold. I think you're underpricing that, but um, anyway, Rob, uh, I think it's almost time to get some water. It's a bit hot out here, but I guess we got a little sidetracked. I've heard I do that from time to time, but can you finish telling, explaining why there's no, you can, it's hard to find a, Sorry, it's a little windy there. Hard to find a taxi in Las Vegas. Yeah, there are no taxis in Vegas because everybody got their stimulus check and they'd rather work from home is what our, our, our cabby told us. And that goes for the Lyft drivers and the Uber drivers. So if you come to Vegas, it's a great, great time to be here. Lots of people, lots of energy, but good luck. You may have to walk, you may have to walk around. Good luck finding a cab. And I might add, that's not Rob's opinion. A guy directly said it to us. People are home playing video games. They don't want to come out because they're giving incentives not to work. Right. So either case, 
Just wanted to check in, get some of the scenery of Vegas. Um, I think I'm being radiated by some 5G as we speak, so gonna go find an aura condom and head to the airport as soon as possible. Rob, thanks as always for joining me today. Uh, I'm sure the CFTC will have uh, revealed the true crime. Wow, David Price is in the chat room, former Red Sox pitcher, but I'm sure by the time we get off our plane, CFTC will have sprung its trap on all the villains in the silver market. But in either case, actually, I kind of hope they don't. I'm going to give them a chance to be fair, but hopefully they just say nothing, and I'm sure that's what will happen. And that's why you can hit the subscribe button. You can hit the notification bell. You can go to goldsilverpros.com. Log on there. Come on, give me the thumbs up again. I got to get in it. Yeah, I'm out.